Welcome back to the Beyond the Dojo podcast. I'm Lauren. I'm Jeremiah. And you're listening to episode 12, which should be nice and interesting because our topic for today is spirituality in karate. Yes. Yes. So um, just to preface this, um, there is a difference between spirituality and religion. Jeremiah and I come from religious backgrounds. We both come from Christian backgrounds and we're involved in our church and all that stuff. Um, But you don't, I don't think you have to be a religious person or practice a structured religion. Is that what, structured religion? What yeah, to, to, yeah to, to be spiritual. Yeah, to be spiritual or to, um, uh, I guess, develop spirituality when it, it's in reference to martial arts. And we're going to talk about kind of what that means. Um, so just kind of coming from that perspective, you know, our perspective on spirituality may be pretty different from, pe- from people who either have um, alternative religious backgrounds, like different from Christianity, or maybe people who are from kind of a non non theist um, background. So, um, yeah, just prefacing and saying that. So, what do you think uh, spirituality is, Jeremiah? I think it's the maturity through experience. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, maturity through wisdom. Okay. I think it's spirituality is that it's the wisdom to it, to me is only learned through experience. Okay. And to be tr- mature in that, you know, you're old in age, you have, you've seen it, you've been around the block kind of thing. Okay. And you have the ability to maybe separate yourself from situations, mm-hmm. not only physically, but mentally, emotionally and stuff like that. And a good example to me is that person who could defuse a fight before there was one. Okay. That kind of thing gotcha. where they're able to not only talk their way out of it, but see that it's coming and just work their, what, themselves out of it. A true martial artist to me is never has to fight. Yeah, they're so well developed overall that they could see and understand a situation and handle it properly. So, are you thinking that charisma is part of being I, spiritual? I think charisma is a little bit part of it. Or is it like an expression of that? I think it is. I think it's, it is a tool used. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, you don't think you have to be char- charismatic. Mm-hmm. I just think you. It's a tool, mm-hmm. and and to me, spirituality is the ability to see is the ability to remove yourself from the situation. And use all tools available. Okay. You know, be able to like literally separate yourself and go, okay, these are the possibilities, blah, blah, blah. Here's the solutions. Mm -hmm. You know, what can I do in this situation? Yeah. That not only saves me, but keeps the least amount of harm to my opponent or someone who's coming at me, you know, the attacker, Mm -hmm. you know. It's funny you said wisdom, and all I thought was Gandalf, but then you started talking about fighting, and that didn't fit anymore. <laughs> Gandalf. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I think spirituality is uh, it is that it um, it is that wisdom, but it's also like a um, a mental emotional development that's maybe out, it's outside of physicality though, so it's not really something that you're physically developing, but maybe it develops alongside your physicality. Yeah, I agree. Um, so it's almost like something other, either in you or outside, um, that you're acknowledging or using, utilizing maybe. Um, see, it's a, it's a hard topic because I yeah. feel like it's such a difficult thing to put a definition on. I mean, if you look up definitions online, it's going to say like, you know, it's not really organized religion. It's more of like a acknowledgement of something greater either in you or outside of you. Mm-hmm. I think it, that's, that's kind of true even here. So how would you, what would you say spirituality is in reference to martial arts? I think it's the same thing. It's the maturity through wisdom. And when it comes to martial arts, that ability to see conflict ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And be able to avoid it without having to really be a part of it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, spirituality is is also the idea that, or the understanding that, or wisdom is the understanding that you can the ability to make the right choices at the right time. Okay. You know. Yeah. And, and I believe when I watch a spiritual person, or I say, "Oh, that guy's spiritual," or he might be, he might have something more there that that thing. Mm-hmm. Man, you can watch him, and a lot of times, what it is is, is that he makes the right moves, mm-hmm. he makes the right decisions, he knows how to handle things, and it's it's on point. Yeah. You know. Do you, Do you feel like there are there have been experiences in your karate that have um develop you in that way based on your definition of spirituality or do you feel like you have some kind of development there you know as a child i didn't really think of it but as an adult looking back i mean we 
we were meditating three days a week, two hours a week, moving meditation, you know, you're up and down the floor, monotonous, you know, you knew the count, you knew the steps, you knew when to turn. It was very, very repetitive. Mm -hmm. And I think in that practice, Mm -hmm. it it kind of forces you to draw yourself in a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not out and watching everybody else. You're, you're, You're thinking about what you're doing. Yeah. And how you are. Am I quiet? Am I breathing right? Mm-hmm. You know, those things are are meditative practices. Mm-hmm. So I think just by training alone. Yeah. If you're sincere in it, mm-hmm. will develop a spirituality to you. Because mm-hmm. you'll, you'll, you know, talk to most of your karate guys. And they'll, when you talk to them, they, they most of the time, well, most, some guys will say, I always think it's my fault before in a conflict. You know, you go, oh, man, what did I do wrong? You know? And, and it's, you know, it's like that uh, complex. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's a little like this because we're always looking to see if we made a mistake in our karate. <laughs> if we did something wrong, we need to correct. And I think it kind of overflows in our personality. And I think that's how spirituality is developed in karate mm-hmm. is that we the community or the, the culture of it, the practice of it, the physicality of it, because you're, you're exhausted at the end of the t- night. But you're not mentally washed away. You have that ability to stay strong through a practice. Mm. You know, a lot of people, a lot of kids, you know, after 30 minutes, after their first couple of practices, not only are they physically tired, they're mentally done. They, they can't handle it no more. They're, they're, there's too much thought there. You can see them turn off. Mm-hmm. And it's not, they're, they're not physically tired. They're just mentally done. They don't want to, they don't want to think anymore. Yeah. So to me, that's how karate kind of, teaches you or, or, or be, helps you become more spiritual. It, it's just the physical repetition, the the aspect of always correcting yourself, trying to make yourself better, always looking for the better part of you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like that kind of veers away from the description that you gave of what you feel spirituality is, but it kind of comes toward what I said, where, so like there's something somewhere in the middle between those two things that so you said it was more wisdom and decision-making kind of, and mine was more like, you know, internal, external development. Yeah, but so the, I... wis- the wisdom comes from repetition. The mm-hmm. wisdom comes from the the introspective kind of approach to your karate. Mm-hmm. That wisdom, that introspective, it flows over into your life, mm-hmm. your lifestyle, your life choices. Mm-hmm. You know, it that kind of thing is wise. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. That That to me is wisdom. So maturity through wisdom and that whole idea is, is spirituality. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like um, that, I guess you could say, like, inner strength, sort of. That's not, I mean, it's there's a physical strength that's developing through karate training, and there's a mental resilience that's developing as well. But I feel like somewhere in the middle of that mental emotional resilience is that something outside of yourself, or maybe that's something inside of yourself, because I'm not really sure which, that develops alongside that, too. Yeah. Um, and you're talking about, you know, repetitions, like th- that moving meditation idea. But I think it's more than that because I feel like there's almost comfort in meditation. In my experience, it was more, um, this really sucks right now. <laughs> and I have to figure out some way to get through this. Um, I mean, after you've trained for two hours and you're just there, the teacher still has you going on after two hours nonstop. I feel like you, you develop um, coping mechanisms in a way, but then you also, because you have maybe experienced this in the past, maybe the previous week or the previous training session, you know that it's going to be okay. Like there's something that's pulling you through toward the end. You feel like you get a little bit calloused Um, to the effect of the whole like pressure and getting you out of the comfort zone. Well, I guess so. Like you could call it like a callousing or a resilience, something like that. Like you just, you can deal with it because you've dealt with it previously, but it's hard for me to, to separate if we're going to only talk about spirituality and it not being a, being a religious thing, it's hard to separate that from a mental, emotional thing yeah. that a mental, emo- mental and emotional resilience that you're developing through training. Right. I feel like that is one of the biggest factors when it comes to martial arts is being able to have that and being able to control emotions whenever you're really tired and someone makes you really angry in class and learning how to, how to control that. You're talking about, you know, street confrontation or whatever, being able to diffuse a situation. I feel like all of that is developed under fire and under stress when you're on the dojo floor. And that is kind of that spiritual element that comes in 
alongside your your martial arts training even if it's not truly the intention of the teacher like if it's not verbalized right i think it's something that still happens yeah i think it's that it's the beautiful byproduct of karate yeah you know yeah look at all your your karate guys have been in 20 30 years deep they all have these certain neck characteristics they look you dead in the eye they're confident mm -hmm. they're stern mm -hmm. but a lot of times they're gentle too yeah and humble mm -hmm. and and what maybe sometimes even the most giving people you ever meet yeah. Right. Yeah. But they all have that. I'll kill you. Look, <laughs> Yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And that I think that's what you just described is that whole development of that. And to me, that's the spirituality of karate. It's almost as if we are truly um, evoking like a samurai spirit in a sense, mm -hmm. you know, samurai for a certain period of their, their, the, you know, of history, they weren't warriors as much were they artists. And they took the same approach mm -hmm. to their art as they did their their, their self-defense or their, their martial arts. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happening to us in modern days, is that we're taking the same approach to our life mm -hmm. as we do to our karate. Mm -hmm. And that too, right there gives us some kind of spirituality over most people who compartmentalize everything. Yeah. I go to work. I have gamer friends. I have fishing buddies you know there's not like this whole universal thing it's very compartmentalized and i think a lot of karate people can step back and go eh, you know flow with flow with everybody or anybody that to me is the developed through karate yeah and then you're also you, you had mentioned like um almost like compassion toward other people or right. you know you have developed enough resilience and experience enough in karate training just through the actual training part is what we've right. kind of been talking about that you're able to connect with other people maybe right. on a different level so maybe you're connecting with your training uh, partners or or other people in life a little bit differently because you I, have been gone you've gone through um it's a kinship kinship i can't i can't it's almost kinship? like a family tie yeah you know because we all been through brown belt level where it, it just felt like you were never right. Mm -hmm. You were tormented. Mm -hmm. your, your physicality was tested. You were pushed to your limits, mm -hmm. right? In, in a sense, you're abused. Okay. And, and a lot of dojos, a lot of the teachers, they went over that line, mm -hmm. you know? And, and back in the day, that was common. Mm -hmm. And it was like, whatever. It, it kind of gives you that compassion for someone when you see them as the victim or you see them in, in, a, in, a, in a situation where it's just, you know, it's not right. Mm -hmm. You get that compassion for them. Yeah. Okay. Cause you're, 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 you're not necessarily a victim of the same situation, mm -hmm. but you feel like you have a family tied to them. Like, so it's almost so. like you're empathetic toward people because you have felt struggle. You're yeah, just different yeah. and you're empathizing with other people who are yeah. struggling and so yeah, this, yeah. able to kind of love on them. Yeah. Dude, kind of makes I, sense. I love the fact that I'm the, I'm the, uh, <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> Damn it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. When I get the word out, you'll understand this whole point. <laughs> I love the fact that you're so articulate. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a tradesman. <laughs> there you go. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm like, yeah, man, it's like this. is. You're like, no, it's that. This like, is called <laughs> woman-splaining. Oh, wow. <laughs> If it was the other way around, it would be mansplaining. Right, and I'd be hung. Yes, yes, you would be hanged. H hanged. Hanged. If you're, if it's a, if it's an object, it's hung. If it's a person, it's hanged. Yeah. I learned that in school. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, by the way, you're Asian, and it's an Oriental rug. <laughs> I'm not Asian. He's Asian, but yes, that's what you mean. Yes, it's the same thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I was going to ask a question about um, something, and I got off track, so I kind of forgot. Um, maybe it will come back to me. Okay, so what are some ways, here's the hard one, that spirituality and physicality can get confused or mixed up in karate or martial arts in general? So... Uh, there are, we have talked to teachers who have read, um, you know, the old Shota context, and they've talked about how sometimes it's difficult to understand certain concepts in these texts when they're translated to English, because there are some cultural and spiritual references that only someone in an Eastern culture would understand. And yeah. Americans or Westerners have a harder time con uh, conceptualizing because we don't 
were not immersed in that culture. And I don't know what those specific things are. It's just been told to me. So I can see that there's like some, there's some connection between having a cultural, spiritual background, like Shinto, Buddhism, right. et cetera. Um, so th- I can see that connection. Um, but what do you think about um, replacing one with the other? I'm a Kihon Katakumite kind of guy. Okay. I like all three. Okay. I think all three are necessary for the development of any individual. Mm -hmm. That being said, the physicality, the mental, and the spiritual Mm -hmm. aspects of karate Mm -hmm. have to be there. They all have equal parts. Gotcha. In the training and and, and your focus. Uh, maybe some people are more adapt to be certain areas mm. than others, but I feel like it should be balanced. Okay. And I and I don't and some people are like, oh, they they'll absolutely just write it off as if it's hokey pokey, and I don't believe that either. There is value there. I just you know I believe it's just like your training. You don't you, you kind of have small discoveries as you go along, and mm. the small developments create a larger development and an overall longer period. Mm. That's how I see that. Mm-hmm. So that's I don't I don't believe that you could spiritually develop yourself so much that you could do a no touch knockout. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, that to me to there. me is hokey. Yeah. <laughs> now developing yourself as a, a human being and uh-huh. being a better person and and well rounded and sharing that ability with people mm-hmm. that's a whole different story to me. Yeah. But you know, you yeah. can't conjure up key and knock somebody out. That's just not going <laughs> to happen. So this is really interesting. I read this um, pretty awesome book one time, and it was called Language of God, but it was it was written by the guy who um, was briefly the head of the Human Genome Project, and he's actually a Christian, and he talks about how people people will um, they will equate the natural and the supernatural, and they will use one to explain the other, but they're on different planes. So supernatural is obviously on one plane, and the natural is on the other. So you are walking on dangerous ground if you try to explain the natural through the supernatural. So what they used to do back in the day, which they still sometimes do, is uh, Christians would use this God of the gaps idea, where there was something that they couldn't explain, like science wasn't explaining it yet. So they would just say, oh, it's just because God. Um, and it's not to say that that's not the reason why, but it's just that there is a natural explanation. So it, you know, there's a natural explanation and then there's a supernatural thing that happens with that. And if you try to intermingle the two, you are not doing either justice, I guess. So I feel like the physicality and spirituality, you said they had to have their equal parts. I feel like that's kind of the same thing. You can't use spirituality to explain something physical. I feel like when you do that, you're taking away from from that physical element. Now, granted, you can say that there are some concepts that maybe can be explained with spiritual ideas, because like going back to, you know, the original text with um, cultural or spiritual references or like more actually more religious references, maybe that were present in Japan, China, that kind of those kind of places, Um, you know. I, that's one thing if you're making a reference to try to get a point across, but um, it's not a justifiable fact. Just about justifiable. I can't say it. Justifiable. Justifiable fact. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it, this it, this can kind of get kind of gray if you believe in the key stuff. Okay, that's fine. We don't. Um, we believe that you know you're you're essentially transferring energy in your own body. That's that's actually a scientifically proven thing. Is that you're you're you know using force to transmit force from you to a different part of your body or to an object. I mean that's 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 a technical true thing. If you define that as something different, then okay, that's fine. But um, <clears throat> I think to stray away from the physical explanation of how to physically do that thing. Right. Let's take, for example, you're doing a reverse punch. You're doing a, a gyakuzuki in place, you know, just explaining good mechanics on how to do that gyakuzuki and, and trying to kind of making that clear rather than allowing it to be a different concept. I, explaining it with spiritual ideas is fine, I guess, but not allowing people to learn through the physical part too. To, to then develop the spiritual part, I right. feel like that's where there's danger. There's danger. Right. I also believe that there's no development physically. There's no development spiritually. Absolutely. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Because we're both in agreement that yeah. you have to be physically developing yourself through martial arts training in order for the spirituality Absolutely. to develop. You know, if, if you're developing it outside of that, I feel like that becomes more of a religious practice. Right. So, like, if you're, you know, meditating and otherwise or whatever, you know, maybe it's not, maybe it's not like organized religion, but I feel uh, like it's, I feel like it's kind of. I think it's, I feel like it, outside of the physicality of it, then you're taking away the karate aspect of the spirituality. Yeah. You know, that, that's the connecting thing to me. That's yeah. the chain link, Yeah. you know? So that way it, it, it makes sense to me in a spirituality because I haven't experienced anything else. So I don't know any better. Yeah. So yeah. take one away from the other. It's not there. Yeah. And, and like we said, you know, we have a religious background to us. This is two very different things. Right. It's kind of black and white. Like what is spirituality versus what is religion? You know, organized religion is one thing. Um, but uh, we feel like spirituality is something that's kind of developed, I guess yeah. it, it, it kind of comes through on your own. And even though you can have guides, like you can have teachers to kind of point you in the right direction. Spirituality is something that kind of develops on its own. I think religion is, is kind of guided a bit more. You have to learn from other people and you learn together. Um, yeah, I feel like it's kind yeah, of different. I, I like, I, I think I, honestly, I feel like your karate is a true reflection of your spirituality. Yeah. You know, like how you, I'm not talking about people are just learning karate. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. talking about guys that have been training for a couple decades. Mm -hmm. After a while, your personality, your spirituality starts to show up in your technique. Yeah. And and I think that's a cool thing about karate because, and that's what makes me think that the that karate practice is a moving meditation. Okay. Because it, it, it develops and you start to reveal things that you know, you're not trying to reveal. It's just starting to show up. Mm-hmm. Either through, but anyways, you know. Yeah. So I think that's a cool thing. Like the karate is a reflection of one. So in what way? You had said something earlier that that was uh, interesting. You know, if, if if you're a staunch, or I'll say it this way. If you're clear and crisp in your karate, you, you can tell that your spirit's clear and crisp. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there's very distinct personality, not personality trait, but spiritual traits mm -hmm. that is uh, expressed through the movement. That when you talk to the person, you could see it in their their thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I see it. You so know, if you. So if you're maybe like a a more boisterous spiritual person, or a little bit more vocal about it, maybe your karate kind of reflects uh, that too. Like maybe it's bigger and. Because then, yeah, I mean, I you walk people's wanna, karate. I'm not trying to be derogatory. Or, no, no. Or just, well, remember, we've, we've heard comments before, but people will watch someone's karate and they'll be like, oh, they have a good spirit. They have like we talk about kiaing. Yeah. Kiaing is, is part yeah. of the spirit idea. Like it all it all kind of comes out through that physicality. Like well, there is a strong let's take spirit. In a way to, for example, Okay. in a way to, for example, everybody knows him as the tiger. Mm -hmm. uh, legendary teacher, legendary JK guy. Right. Fierce on the dojo floor. Mm -hmm. Right. But when you talk to guys who actually trained with him and been around him. They tell you a different kind of in a way to off the floor, mm. but he still has that essence, that 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 mystique, that they, you know they they pick up on. He was different in what way? Well, his karate is extremely powerful, extremely you know tense and 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 explosive. I mean, it was amazing, right? Mm. And when he does karate, you can see it in his face how intense he is. Not by because he's grimacing or anything, but just the intensity in his eyes. Okay. You can see when he's when you watch videos of him teaching, mm -hmm. you could see it, mm -hmm. right? But then you watch videos of him like sitting at dinner tables at ceremonies, and you talk to people who train with him. His eyes are softer; they're 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 different. Mm -hmm. But he still has that cutting edge. You could you'll see him where he cut his eyes somewhere, and you're like, oh wow, yeah. You know, so so maybe that that is makes it even more true that karate is a reflection of your spirit. He's Absolutely. maybe not showing that while he's outside of his karate. right. Like he's not even intending to do it, but it's there. Yeah. I mean, how many times you've been around your one of your senseis or someone you've admired a lot in the middle of dinner, maybe even the middle of getting an ice, you know, something everyday common. You'll catch him do something. You go, whoa, yeah. that was intense. <laughs> right. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like they don't even. It doesn't even register to them, yeah. register to them what they did or what what's going on. Yeah, that to me is the spirituality coming out through your karate. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah. I think on that we'll go ahead and <laughs> call it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. what you been working on, girl? Um, this time boss's show. 
Oh, nice. Yep. Um, just kind of, uh, I did a lot of work on back stance this summer, so making sure the back stances look nice and the turns and all that funky stuff and, you know, <laughs> getting all the strong stuff in the right spots and all that. What are you working on? Uh, I picked up the weighted vest and weighted uh, ankle and wrist weights this week mm -hmm. and did a little bit of work there. Mm -hmm. Been working on the side snap kick mm -hmm. uh, still. And <laughs> I think I got a little something on the front step and crunch, but that's, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, and still doing the left-right katas. Gotcha. Get that balance down. I mean, I'm getting better and more comfortable with it, but mm -hmm. still got to be better. Yeah, buddy. So. All right. Well, you can find us on social media. We're both on Facebook, Lauren Hart, Jeremiah Hart. Yep. We're on our, we have uh, dojo pages as well. And then we're also on Instagram. Right now, Jeremiah is Shotokan Karate Family Fitness, um, Shotokan KHP, or Lauren Hart Athletics. And y'all have a great rest of your day. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye.